Building inspections are critical as they will let you know where to place your bait and how much to use. Random baiting is ineffective and costly. Livestock facilities should be inspected when rodents are most active, just after dusk and again shortly before dawn. If rodents are present, inspections at these times will reveal the location, distribution, and severity of the infestation. This is important because it will let you know where to place baits. Also, if you see rats or mice during the daylight hours, you can be assured that you have a severe infestation. When doing a building inspection, start by checking areas where feed is stored or where spilled feed may lay. Rodents will build up in high numbers in areas where food is easily accessible. Rat burrows can occur both indoors and out, but will commonly be seen along the outside of the building up against the foundation. Check outside building foundations and the perimeter edges of all grain silo cement pads every couple of weeks for burrows. If the facilities have insulated walls, the walls should be checked for damaged insulation. If you see expelled insulation on walkways or around building perimeters, there are rodents nesting inside the walls. Insulated attics should also be inspected, especially during the cooler months and if the facility is located where roof rats are established. Next, look at overhead wiring and conduit lines for grease marks. Mice and rats may be using these lines to travel throughout the premises. If you have scales, look beneath them. Mice will build up in large numbers in this kind of protected location. If pen feeders are being used and they have hollow base voids, these voids should be inspected regularly. When trying to reduce rodent populations, remember that the key to success is bait placement. It is very important to place bait where the rodents will repeatedly encounter it. In livestock facilities, no matter how well managed, rodents almost always have access to some amounts of feed. Therefore, they won't or don't have to venture very far from their nests in order to search for food. A combination of direct bait placement and the use of bait stations in various pathways both inside and outside the facility is the best approach to achieve quick and effective control. Where to place baits. Indoors, at or near rodents regular feeding sites, in the pathway from nests to food sources, in hollow base voids of feeding equipment, in tamper resistant bait stations near stored feed, on wall ledges, on top of pen dividers, in attics, outdoors, in and around active burrows, in pathways between active burrows and food sources, around the perimeter of the building. When baiting indoors, it's important to consider the type of activity that is occurring inside the facility. For example, you will need to bait swine grow finish facilities different than you will bait nursery or sow buildings. When baiting for rodents in grow finish buildings, remember that there is a lot of activity by the pigs on the floor, so mice will bypass the floor and use pen dividers and wall ledges to travel. For rodent baiting on ledges and pen dividers, use blocks or chunks secured with a nail or zip tie to prevent livestock animals from reaching or ingesting the bait. Bait every seven to 10 days as needed for the first three weeks and then every 30 days thereafter. Place blocks or chunks every eight feet on wall ledges around the inside perimeter of grow finish facilities. When possible, like in nursery and sow buildings, bait stations should be used on the floors and in aisleways where rats and mice are active and placed every 20 feet around the inside perimeter of the building. Grow finish barns are areas of high activity and are somewhat difficult to bait. We recommend using both floor and off-floor baiting programs, but don't bait within the pens directly. Baiting only the floors of grow finish barns won't control mice populations. Mice in these units often travel directly to feeders via the tops of pen dividers or wall ledges and may not even come in contact with the floor. Install bait stations along back wall ledges near any vertical conduits the mice use to climb into attics or where back wall ledges intersect with pen dividers. Also install ledge baiters on the tops of pen dividers between box style feeders that are back to back between different grower pens. Be sure to place mouse bait stations in each open corner of floor space where livestock animals do not have access to the bait or station. This is especially critical in the farrowing house and nursery where the corners contain unoccupied space. Attic spaces. Any insulated ceiling attic areas should be inspected and baited. This is crucial with severe infestations. If attics are left unbaited, the ceiling rodents will replace the rodents killed below. 
When baiting attic floors, use Havoc, Psykill, or Die Kill place packs. Put the place packs every 8 to 10 feet for mice and every 20 feet for rats. Be sure to bait the entire attic. There is no need to open up the packs in this situation, as the rodents will eat through the packaging. If an attic floor isn't present, bait rafters by wire tying blocks or bait chunks to the rafters. Bait should be placed every 8 to 10 feet for mouse infestations and every 20 to 50 feet for rat infestations. When baiting for a heavy infestation, use the lower intervals. Bait should be checked and replaced once per week initially and then every 30 days after the first three weeks. Outside Perimeter Baiting Inspect the perimeter of the building and immediate grounds. Determine if burrows are active by filling the burrow with dirt. Go back the next day. If the burrow has been opened, it's active. Place filled bait stations every 20 to 50 feet around the perimeter of the building and check them every 7 to 10 days, replacing any eaten bait. Continue to monitor all ground burrows for at least 3 weeks. After the initial 3 week period of baiting every 7 to 10 days, you should bait every 30 days. If you have a heavy rodent infestation, place them every 20 feet apart. Baiting a Rodent Cafe Bait Station Start by inserting the key into the keyholes in the lid. Lift lid exposing the interior of the box. Remove horizontal bait bars allowing access to the vertical bait bars. Place several blocks of bait onto the vertical bars. Place several blocks of bait on the horizontal bars and place back into the receiving slots in the bait box. Remove the key from the lid and close the lid firmly. You should hear it snap back into place. Place bait station in desired location. Please contact Neogen if you have any questions.